Hi, it's Jeff here from discoverdoublebase.com. I am joined by one of our incredible tutors who's presented an in-depth course on slap bass technique over at the website. So if you want to learn uh, all about slap bass from the basics to advanced playing, please go and check out our course. By today's guest, it's Joe Fick. Joe, welcome. Hey, Jeff. Okay, we need to talk about your bass. That's what <laughs> <laughs> you pulled this out of the bag, and I was like, "What's going on right, with this bass? Right. What's going on with this bass?" And we get so many questions about equipment and setup. So what we'll do today, mm. if you're cool with this, is we'll talk about the, you know the strings, the setup, how you approach playing live. Sure. But first of all, let's just start with the bass. Like, what is this from about? You know, uh, 1812 or something. It looks like it's been yeah, close, <laughs> close. Uh, 2004. Right. So this is a new bass. Yeah, but you've been playing this hard. <laughs> yes, I brought it brand new in 04. Which um, yeah, or actually, I got it in 03. It's an 04. So I guess they're like they're like cars. They come out the year before. Yeah. And uh, when I bought it, it was or when it came came out of the box, it was pretty much a white like this color right here. Why? Right, okay. It didn't have a scratch on it. The fingerboard was perfect. And uh, have you got any scratches on it now? Oh, just uh, <laughs> there's one little one down here. Yeah. yeah. So. And what can it, so what's the manufacturer of Joe? Where's the uh, who made? Is it Engelhart? So yeah, it's an Engelhart Swingmaster, yeah. just a just a plywood base. And um, I've had several of these over the last 25 years, and I finally decided to settle down with one. Yeah. So what what drew you to this particular one? Why did you think? Because <clears throat> oh, you play, you know, we talk about bases. You play loads of bases and what right wh why, why this one um you know i think i i just decided to hold on to this and after a while it kind of became sentimental and yeah. um i i i've lived i lived in memphis for 11 years and i've lived in nashville for 11 years and about the last five or six years of living in memphis and then when i came to nashville this was the base and and the longer t the longer it went on and it and it you know it stayed together and and it was just every everything i was Every gig I played was on this bass, and the longer I had it, I was like, "Well, maybe I better take care of this thing." You know, yeah. this, obviously, this is uh, this is here to stay. And uh, so, really, I everything that I've kind of learned in the last 15 years yeah. about slap bass and country bass and rockabilly bass uh, is is because of this instrument right here. So, um, for better or worse, I'm I'm holding on to her. Oh, it's awesome. Can we hear a few notes so we can check out what it sounds like? Yeah, uh, so I will warn you before I play this that it's got a double sound post in it, uh, yeah. and that's to fight feedback. So it's not the most resonant bass acoustically, but um, it does the job, and um, especially in a live situation where I have to get it up super loud, mm. um, it's, uh, it's pretty feedback resistant. So... Sounds amazing, it really does. And also, you you just mentioned really offhand. I asked you about a mark on it. You said, "Oh, there's a mark where we rub our boots on." Yes, what, I've been meaning to ask you all week. What we what are you talking about? What is oh, this it's mark? it's this right here. Yeah, we some, <laughs> sometimes just jokingly for good luck, we'll do we'll do this whole thing. And it's you know when we're trying to a lot of the gigs that we play down on Broadway are, are four hours with no breaks. Matter yeah. of fact, they're all four hours. So with you no and the breaks. boys get together, rub, rub the boots. Yeah, down. and we'll just you know what sometimes the sometimes the spirits are a little bit down, or you know we've yeah. been in we're about two hours in, and we're like, come on guys, let's get it together, and I'll just do this, and the other guy will come over and do this, and we'll you know so it's it's just to keep the momentum going, and and then obviously you've been wearing a patch through where you yeah. uh, do, do you think you're ever going to see daylight on the other side? Well, I'll <laughs> let you know. It, it feels pretty solid right now, but uh, I mean it's we're. Only only, we're only 18 years in on this thing, so. It's absolutely awesome. What about the back? Oh, hang on a sec. You've got to show us this uh, crack. Oh, the sea bow. Yeah. yeah, look at this. So yeah, this is uh, the sea bow's busted. Oh. I broke. I fell through that back in 09, and I'm meant to have it fixed, but. I've just gotten so busy that... Hey, you know, I've got a recommendation from you. Our friend Randy Hunt is just around the corner. Yes. He's a great luthier. And, Randy uh, Hunt's great. Randy uh, Hunt is the last the last gentleman to touch this fingerboard. About eight years ago, oh, I had it planed. Right? I've only had this planed one time. Yeah. So uh, I'm embarrassed to say that, but at the same time... Um, you know, it's, I guess it's part of my sound, so... Yeah, well, it's an awesome instrument. And okay, so mm. slap bass, one of the key things sound wise the yes. sound wall it's really about the gut strings isn't it and, and like so do you have to have gut strings for slap bass no you don't uh, and i think some people would actually argue that that you don't have to have gut strings some some players are very actually adamant on steel strings yeah and um a lot of uh, there's a lot of opinions about gut and about um intonation and pitch and all that yeah um for me it's kind of an old habits die hard kind of thing i made the transition from 
uh, gut or from steel strings rather to gut strings in 1998. Okay. And um, I, I touch we touch a little bit about this on the course uh, where we talk about the, the the articulations of some of the slaps coming out clearly. And one thing I noticed when I made that transition from steel to gut was mm. how much more things like the drag triplet, uh, mm. how much more you could hear that, and just the little things, the quadruplets. You know, and these might be small things to some people, but to me, it's it's a big part of my playing. And so, having that gut string, having the strings that are a little low, more low tension, to me, uh, is uh, it's it's a big part of it for me. So, and I like the tone of it. I just, I mean, that's this yeah. is the sound of this is Bob Moore. You know, this is the sound of Bill Black and all those all those players from back in the day. That's, but you but you've got a double sound post. So it's a I do. plywood bed, bass. Yes. Uh, with a double sound post to deaden the sound. Yes. So you don't have to put a towel down there or anything like this. Right. And then the gut strings give you that thwack and that kind of attack that you want. And yes. And comfortable on the hands. I think so. Yeah. I mean, compared to, yeah, definitely compared to, uh, to steel strings, yeah. I mean, I have it, plus, you know, I play every day, and that's the key. Yeah. I, that's really the key to this, this kind of technique is not laying off of it. You know, you have to, you have to really put in the time. Um, and I mean, I'm putting in at least three and a half hours a day uh, on stage, and, yeah. that, and that doesn't even take into consideration what I'm doing at home. So, in order to keep those calluses and, and all that, and I mean, even if you, even if you have gut strings, you, you don't play all the time, you're still going to get blisters. So, it's not really a matter of of you know guts versus steel. It's just mm. more about the amount of time you put into it. And what about the tuning? Do you have any issues? And I mean, your tuning sounds great. I mean, I haven't noticed you having to tune up much as well. Well, it seems pretty um, stable. How, what's your experience? Yeah, you know, I, I was telling you the other day. I, I just put a brand new, brand new G on here yeah. for the for the course. I would have expected that to be slipping like crazy. Well, but. you know what I do, and this is kind of what I've learned over the years, um, mm. is I, I I basically put the string on, get mm. it up to pitch, and then seriously, if you just get really aggressive with it yeah. and just tug on it for 10, 15 minutes and just keep tuning it, keep tuning it, yeah. um, you'll you'll get it stretched. Uh, a lot of a lot of guys say, oh, it takes a couple weeks, and I'm like, man, mm. you just got to get in there and dig in and really, because within a couple Couple days, I can get this thing to pretty, pretty mm. much stay to pitch. So really, that's amazing. You don't find over the longer gigs because I always think that that's one of the reasons why people move to steels is because the, you know, the guts losing their, you know, losing their pitch. But well, yeah. I mean, let's Works face it, gut strings have their their issues, and mm. and that's you know I've been fortunate enough for the last ten years to, pretty much every gig I play is indoor. Uh, when I lived in Memphis, I was playing a lot of festivals, rooftop parties, and I mean, the humidity down there is crazy. I mean, yeah. it, it is here in Nashville as well, but, you know, the strings start to fall apart and, and yeah. uh, you know, the price of these and replacing them. So it's definitely, there are definitely some issues. Yeah. So wh where'd you get the, I mean, you've got just pure guts there. You don't even, have, they're not even wrapped, are they, on the E maybe? Right. So, so my ideal set yeah. is, is, is three, so a three in one set. So it's a plain G, plain D, plain A. Yeah. And then I like the, I like the, uh, the wrapped E. And I have, I've had a plain gut E before, but it's just like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like someone knocking on a door. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to it. Yeah, and and with the A, I get away with it because, like I said, like 99% of what I do is yeah. a live situation with an amp, and so I'm getting like sustain just through volume of the amp. So, so you're playing at Robert's Western World, right? And that's a that's a serious gig. You are pumping out the music. It's loud. Yeah. Do you have any problems with feedback or anything? I mean, there's always going to be problems with feedback, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I get creative with with left hand muting, and uh, I mean, yeah. anybody that says they don't have problems with feedback is just probably not playing super loud, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, we are really pushing it down there. Mm. I mean, this is this is a long shotgun style building yeah. with a balcony, and we're trying to we're trying to communicate with the last person in the room. And the yeah. only way to do that really is to not play loud all the time, but you do have to be dynamic. And so mm. at times we're very loud. And um, so, you know, yeah, there's, there's going to be feedback issues. But, um, you know, I've got it down to where I know exactly how to mute. I know to, how to creatively do things with my left hand that I need to. And uh, also I got the amp kind of dialed into how I need it. So. so what kind of pickups and amps are you using to amplify yourself then? Okay, so this is uh, this is cool. This is uh, this is a Barbera pickup made by a guy named Rich Barbera out of Staten Island, New York. Now, it um, 
I think it's loosely based upon the Wilson pickup that so, was. So that's your tuner in your in your hand, though. Yeah, that's my there. tuner. Yeah, yeah, yeah ignore yeah. that. Yeah. And then it, it's actually built into the bridge, isn't it? Yes. You, yeah. Yes. So this is there's a graft underneath here. Yeah. And it it it's uh, you can't remove it. You'd have to actually mm. send this back to him to do it. But you trace your bridge. Yeah. The top of your bridge. He builds you a new top. You keep your feet. Wow. And then inside the bridge is two pickups per string. And so you get to side to side motion if you bow, mm. and then you get th obviously the other pizzicato. And what's what I like about it, um, you can't tell now because I'm not plugged in, but what I like about it is it's super even. So you know where sometimes with other pickups you'll hit like a this and you might get a blend of C and C sharp at the yeah, same time, yeah. or, or it'd just be a real woofy kind of tone. This is literally any note you hit anywhere on the board is real even. And um, it's pretty feedback resistant. I mean, obviously nothing is gonna be ultimately feedback resistant, but I, I kind of equate it to like a, 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 a Underwood pickup on steroids. Cool. It's just a really, just a really uh, loud pickup. And, and do you have any amp preferences when you're on your gigs? Well, <clears throat> I, I've really kind of been anti gear over mm. the last ten years. I settled in on a on a PV Pro 500 and a uh, PV 410 cabinet that I bought. I bought all of it from Dave Rowe actually. Yeah. And uh, when Dave Rowe was kind of on his way out of Roberts, I was kind of on my way in. He said, "Hey man, do you, you want to buy this cabinet from me?" I said, okay, so I'm, I'm literally 10 years later, I'm still using that 410 cabinet that's got, he actually changed out the speakers to from 8 ohm to 4 ohm. So it's got a little extra turbo in there. It's just a 300 watt amp. Yeah. And um, it's really powerful and it's got a really cool sound. And what I like about it, it, this pickup with that amp, is that you don't need a separate pickup to go under the fingerboard to pick up the slap. Now, a lot of guys would argue that would Ooh. say, oh no, you absolutely have to have that pickup underneath. But I'm yeah. telling you, that my my amp like I'm just able to dial it in with the treble and it and it comes out clearly and you can hear all the little articulations and it's really great. So that's, that's amazing. <clears throat> well, Joe, just before we finish off, but what about people at home who've just got like myself who are interested in learning slap bass mm -hmm. but they don't have like this gut string setup yeah. and the ply? I mean, can you do it on any, any instrument? I think so. I mean, I started on steel strings and yeah. I played steel strings for five years. Um, there's a lot of affordable strings out there there's there's nylon strings there's super mm. nil strings there's roto sound strings and these are strings you can get a whole set underneath under a hundred dollars you know wow. i mean guts are expensive the other thing i recommend too is if you are going to get gut you can always do a mixing and matching you can always just get two the g and the d if you can't yeah. afford a full set you can keep your a and e uh steel maybe your spy records if you have those and you can put a g and d playing gut on there and you kind of get the best of both worlds so where are you getting the strings <clears throat> on your bass from what, what brand are they uh okay so i'm not too picky about the brand i usually yeah. get them from the string emporium uh and if they're out uh i call lemur and if they're out uh sure maybe hammond ashley out of seattle but uh, uh i usually just try to order maybe one or two at a time as i need yeah. them i i, I they can get pretty pricey. The full sets are getting up into the threes now. So, sure. so you're just saying up some any kind of playing gut, just want something. I think yeah. so. I, yeah. I, I somebody told me years ago that that they're actually all made at the same place and they just put different <laughs> brand names on them. But I don't know if that's true or not. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's so cool to hear. I'm trying to think if there's any other little questions I had about gear. Oh, the last one that I knew people would want to know in terms of setup. Yes. It's quite. It's quite. It doesn't look <clears> too high to me. I, I, you know, it's, how how. How's it looking in terms of the string highs? So <clears throat> that's a good question because I never, I, I am not one of those guys that goes by measurement at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, I have an adjustable bridge. But I can't even tell you the last time I probably even adjusted it. For me, it's 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 a it's the matter of um, being able to get your fingers obviously comfortably underneath the string, uh, but not having to work super hard at it. Okay. And the way you're gonna know this is when you get doing some of these more complex things like, or you know. If those articulations aren't coming out, and if you're really struggling to get that, and, yeah. and it's just too much work, then obviously you're, you're too high, okay? If you're slipping out, then it's too low. So I, I, can't tell, I can't tell anybody what height to put it at because I don't even know for myself, but what I know that basically it, it's definitely a personal preference. So comfort, comfort really is, is the ultimate key for me. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining me. It's been so exciting to learn all about this 
incredible like style that you take so far there is oh. so much to it and you do it with such artistry and care and Thanks. the lessons are incredible that you've presented so if you want to learn all about Joe's course please go and check that out and Joe's been working really hard but I'm going to ask him to work even harder I'm just going to put it on the spot and see if he could play us out with just a couple of moments of music go on Joe all take right. it away you got it Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you.